I call this the cannery job. In the fish cannery, there were some very dangerous jobs. It was common for at least a half a dozen Indians to die each summer, some by drowning, others by being run over by the train, and still others by unsolved murders when the road was pushed through. Some were hit by cars or killed in car accidents. I must have been a particular pain in the ass because I was given the job of working on the iron chinks. These machines mechanically gutted the fish and cut their fins and tails off. The Chinese normally did the gutting of the big springs and dog salmon, hence the racist whites simply named the machines by their pet name for Chinese. Of course, they wouldn't care if it hurt anyone's feelings. After all, they were the bosses. If anyone complained, they were fired. Below each of the iron chinks, a conveyor ran out to the end of the dock to carry the guts to the bin. The drive sprockets were on the gut bin end of the conveyors. It was my job to reinstall the chains on the sprockets. These chains were so loose that they fell off at least once a day. Now you have to visualize the, the working conditions. The gut bin was under the dock. It was parallel with the outside edge of the dock. The size of the bin was 40 feet long by 15 feet wide and 20 feet deep. There were no safety ladders on the walls just so no guts would hang up uh, anything. This bin had a shaft on each end to swivel on when the bin would be dumped into the gut barge that came in the fall. So the waste rotted all summer, producing a strong stench. The last iron chink apprentice taught me how to sw swing through a hole in the dock, which was inconveniently placed about a foot and a half from the edge of the gut bin. Now you had to swing, let go, pull your hands down past the face board, reach forward and grab the edge of the gut bin. Should you miss grabbing the edge of the gut bin, you dropped into the bin. No one dared think of what would happen should this happen. Now, you were hanging on to the edge, a long bar was handed to you. Then you slid along the edge until you reached the conveyor that dropped off the sprockets, and you pried the chains back on. Then you slid back to the hole and passed the bar out the hole. They usually had two workers, they dropped the light rope through the hole. You had to tie this rope round under your arms with a triple knot and then let go of the edge. They pulled you out. At the end of the season, I had to break in the new apprentice in the routine of sharpening the saws, reinstalling the chains. The new boy was slight of built. I should have known that he was too weak to swing, let go, drop his hands, push forward and grab the wall of the gut bin. You see, I had been in the army, and luckily this had toughened me up enough to survive. I spent a little while showing the boy how to do it. When the time came, I said, are you ready? Yes, he said rather shakily. Then I dropped through the hole, swung forward, dropped my hands, shoved them forward, and grabbed the edge of the gut bin. I slid over to the left to allow him room to hit the wall. I hollered. Keep your knees bent. The guts are deep. You don't want to drag your feet in them or you won't swing properly. In he came. Feet dragged. Hands missed the edge of the gut pin. Down he went. Guts were like quicksand. His face was so filled with horror. Instead of throwing his hands towards me, he dropped them both down as if his open palms would stop him from sinking in the guts. I slid over as quickly as I could, but by the time I reached down to grab him, his head went under the surface. I grabbed his slimy hair and pulled him up a bit. While hanging on with one hand, I kicked both feet under his arms and bending my knees managed to pull his face back out of the slimy guts. I hollered for the rope and hollered to him to keep his arms down or I'd lose him. They dropped the rope through the hole and with one hand I fed it under each of his arms and quickly made three granny knots. Pull him out. Two boys strained really hard and managed to suck him out of the guts which held him like quicksand. 
He was twice as heavy with the slime and crud stuck to him. They managed to drag him through the hole. Then they passed the bar down through the hole. I took it and slid over to where the chains were off the sprocket, pried them back on. Then I slid back past the bar back through the hole and grabbed the rope that they dropped through the hole. It was a slimy end, their idea of a joke. With one hand, I slid it under my arms and tied three granny knots. Okay, I hollered. They pulled me through the hole for the last time. Thank God I got past this part of my life. When I got out, I saw the other boy still sitting there on the brow log. Slime was bubbling out of his nose, and he was talking incoherently. After taking my handkerchief out of my pocket and wiping the slime out of his eyes so he could open them, and making him blow his nose, I grabbed him under both arms and lifted him onto his feet. Go home and shower, you stink, I said to him. I had to go back to work or I wouldn't get paid for the day. So I took him out only to the cannery corner and pointed him in the right direction, gave him a gentle push and went back to work. Later, people said he walked to the track, railroad tracks, and walked towards Port Edward, which was left and instead of right, and never came back. I never went into the gut bin again. I ran a little forklift moving trays of canned fish from the cannery to the packing room. It wasn't until the end of the year when I was told about the boy who dropped into the guts halfway through the season a couple of years before I started working in the cannery. He drowned, and being Indian, they only looked for him when the guts were dumped onto the gut barge. He never came to the surface, so it was just turned into a fertilizer with the guts. The whites joked that he degraded the fertilizer.